Okay, so this is a supplemental video that I'm filming because uh, since the time that we've released the course and now, Instagram has made some changes to the way that you register an application that you would like to authenticate to the Instagram API in such a way that our previous tutorial doesn't completely work and we need to do a little workaround. So let's take a look for a second at the way that we currently, uh, that we previously taught you how to um, execute our Instagram app. So if you start down here in the left, you have your app that was running on the phone. And using the NX OAuth 2 CocoaPod, you would, at the, in, at the um, initiation of a user who maybe clicked the login button, you would use NX OAuth 2 to kick the control of the application from your application to Safari by opening up a web browser. Safari, when it was asked to open a web browser, would go to Instagram's OAuth2 page that you had um, found the URL for by registering your application in a, in a separate browser window. So this, when the user is using your application, they would open the Instagram window in the Safari browser, they would authenticate as the user, and if they authenticated correctly, Instagram would then open, would then send the user to a new browser window which had the protocol starting with something like Scheme, and you could pick out whatever you wanted. When Safari tried to open a window that had the protocol Scheme instead of HTTP, it would look internally in its settings to see if there were any applications that were registered for accepting URLs that start with this Scheme protocol. Safari, of course, is the application that's registered to open, application, open URLs that start with HTTP or HTTPS. But Scheme is one that um, hasn't been claimed. And so by setting in our info plist file, the fact that our app or your app rep, uh, claims Scheme as a URL that it handles, when Instagram opened that URL um, in the browser, your app would get started. And then NX OAuth 2 would pick up the uh, control again and would collect the, collect the tokens and um, do the authentication so that then you could refresh and make API calls. So the thing that's happened is this piece right here is no longer possible. This piece here where Instagram passes off control to a different protocol. Instagram changed the way in which you register your applications so that now the, these redirects have to start with HTTP. Well, that's a problem for our application because HTTP is a URL that's claimed by Safari. And so if we want our application to receive the credentials, we somehow have to get around this restriction that Instagram has placed on the redirect URL. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to change the flow a little bit. The first part looks basically the same. Your app, through the initiation of a user, maybe hitting a login button, is going to use NX OAuth 2 to open a URL in Safari that starts with HTTP. So far, this is the same. We're getting those URLs from registering our client. Instagram takes control of the process through the Safari web browser. Your user enters their credentials through the Safari web browser. And now, if the credentials are correct, we are going to load a different URL into the client registry, one that starts with HTTP, but one which goes to, an, goes to a script that's running on the internet. I've provided a sample one at my, at my server. And that script on the internet is going to transform the URL that was used to open it, and it's going to transform it into the thing that we're looking for. So in this case, scheme as a protocol in thing.com. Then, now that we've opened a protocol that has a different, uh, opened a URL that has a different protocol, now iOS will see, oh, what is, we'll look in the info.plist file to see what it is that um, was uh, registered to handle that protocol, and your app will load up again. So what we're doing here is we're adding this step here where we have a resource on the internet that is going to ch transform that URL into something that we expected. Right now, this script is running on my server, you are welcome to take the script and run it on your own server. I don't recommend using my server in some kind of a production application because at any time my server might change or might go down or something like that. You really want to have your own resource under your own control if you have a production environment going on. Okay, so let's look a little bit at what that script is going to do. That script is going to take the URL that started it and it's going to change it into something else. So the script is going to open with uh, this URL. This URL is what Instagram is going to um, send a properly authenticated user to. It's going to begin with uh, the protocol HTTP, which is required now by Instagram. 
the server, which in this case leads to a server at um, my school, Westmont College. Then there's a file path that goes from the root of my uh, web server directory down to a file which is called redirect.php. PHP is a language that is run on the server that's used to do dynamic uh, server-side scripting for web pages. Now, most of the time what you see when someone uh, o opens a URL that ends with .php is a web page is produced for a browser. But PHP doesn't have to do that, and in this case we're doing something different with that script. So the remainder of this URL, it looks like more directory paths, but in fact what this ends up being is it ends up being input to this redirect.php script. Before the, web before the web browser that displays anything related to this URL, this script is going to construct a new URL based on this input such that myscheme slash thing.com is going to become myscheme colon slash slash thing.com. And the script is going to execute a HTTP redirect so that rather than loading this URL in the browser, this URL is going to be loaded instead. And in that way, we're going to get back into the flow of what we um, originally taught you. Now the contents of the PHP script are here. You're welcome to copy it or do whatever you want to do with um, this, this script. Um, I'll go ahead and put it on GitHub so that you can copy it. And if you find anything that should be done better with it, you can um, add it. You can send me a pull request. Um, but this is the contents of that redirect.php script if you ever want to put it on your own uh, device or your own server. So now let's go look at how the project is going to change in response. So let's go to Xcode. Well, let's work backwards, actually. Um, if, we go back to, if we go back to our new scheme here, the first thing we need to do is make sure that our app is registered to accept the new protocol that we are working with. It could be the same as before. But just to start off, in our info.plist file, we have to register something. So in this case, I changed it from scheme to my scheme just to demonstrate that there's a difference. And by adding this to our info.plist, iOS will know to launch our app when it encounters a URL that starts with that protocol. So far, so good. Now, if we go to our, um, I, think, I think it's in our, here's our main storyboard, just to remind you of what our Instagram client looks like. Give it a second to load up. Here we go. Get my picture loaded up. There we are. All right, so then in the view controller, when we, we need to make a couple changes to our login process. Uh, let me get beach ball of death is spinning. There we go. Okay. Um, so let's see, where is my login process? Um, oh, it's not in the, sorry, it's not in view control, it's an app delegate. Right, here's the login process. All right, so what I've done here that's different is a couple things. I have created two properties in order to help manage these redirects. So let's go back to our, our data flow. One of the ways in which we have to make this work or do this workaround in our code is here when we, in, when we start NX OAuth 2 and here when NX OAuth 2 retrieves the new URL back. Originally, we could just work with one redirect URL because when we start this process, NX OAuth 2 is going to pass a redirect URL into the browser ecosystem and Instagram is going to look for that. So Instagram is going to make has going to require NX OAuth 2 to pass it this redirect URL. But the redirect URL that we get back is going to be different than what we passed it initially. And NX OAuth 2 is going to be looking for this one. So we have to intercept this, pro this um, return URL so that we properly launch our application and grab the um, credentials as well. So let's show how we do that. So we're going to do that by managing our two URLs in properties, which are strings. One is outgoing redirect and one is incoming redirect. In outgoing redirect, which is the one that we're going to load insta into Instagram, we're going to put the whole URL here, HTTP, DJP3, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, thing.com. But we know that the one that we're going to get back, given that this is our, uh, the, the outgoing one, the one we're going to get back is right here, my scheme. This is the transformed version of the previous one. So when we initially make our connection, what we're going to do is we're going to use all the credentials that we got from registering our application. Um, but instead of using um, a hard code, well, I guess what we're going to do instead is we're just going to create an NSURL with our outgoing redirect. That's all going to work fine. When we receive our callback after Safari, go, after we do that redirect on the server and, and our Safari opens the new browser with the MyScheme protocol, we're going to get a callback that, when we handle this in the open URL method. 
And so what we're going to do now is we're going to say, oh, hey, you know what? If the incoming redirect uh, contains this, uh, let's see, sorry, let me phrase this correctly. Incoming redirect is my scheme colon slash slash thing dot com. That's the one we expect to get, to get back. So if this contains the scheme which is being sent back to us, so if the reason why our application is being invoked is because the URL start has a particular scheme that is in our incoming redirect, so that's one condition, so if that's true, and if the host that is being passed back to us from the redirect is also contained within our incoming redirect string, then we're going to assume that this is meant for our application, and we're going to reconstruct a new URL based on the information that we get back that has all the authentication tokens in it. So the URL that we're going to construct out of all these pieces are a new, we're going to create a new URL from a string. That string is going to be created from a string with a format. We're going to start with a piece here, which is our outgoing URL redirect. So this is the thing that we started with that we sent off to Instagram. But what we're going to tack onto the end after adding a semicolon is we're going to add all the codes, the authentication codes that came back from uh, the my scheme colon uh, authentication process. So this is going to mash up the piece that we originally sent with the piece that we got back in a way that NX OAuth 2 will recognize that, oh, hey, these are the credentials for the Instagram account. So once we construct that URL, we're going to go ahead and do what we did before, which is ask NX OAuth 2 to handle that redirect. If for some reason this isn't correct, we're just going to try and handle it without making any changes to it, and it's probably going to fail, but this is just an error, error condition. So now, when we run this, let's see if we can, oh, well, let me show you how we um, set this up in the browser. So meanwhile, when we manage our clients, down here is the client that I'm working with, and we go here to manage, and we go here to security. We want to make sure we disable implicit OAuth OAuth, and then we want to add our redirect URI here. Before this was a URL that was something like scheme colon colon thing dot com, but when we try and do that, uh, it, it's going to give us an error saying that, oh yeah, you, your URL has to start with HTTP or HTTPS. So instead we come back here and we're just going to use this one that will redirect to the thing that we want. Load that, everything's good. We go back to our Xcode. We run this in our simulator. It'll take me a second to bring up the simulator. Okay, our application launches. Give it a second to build the screen. All right, this is the default picture that I've got. When I click login, what that's going to do is that's going to, through NX OAuth 2, it's going to open the web browser to the Instagram page. It's going to ask for me to authenticate to Instagram. I'm going to use my credentials to authenticate. Log in, successfully logged in. We're going to open that. There we go. You saw briefly that it went to djp3.westmont. That redirected to my scheme. My scheme is captured by iOS. When we open our, our application again, uh, we now are logged in. And if we hit refresh, we'll see a picture of a gnome, which is on my Instagram feed. And there we go. So that's the way in which we've been able to manage our uh, new change to the Instagram client. It involved changing the flow of authentication to go through an external th server, and it involved a workaround within our code to make sure that the uh, redirect URL on the way out into the authentication process uh, was the same as what came back through the um, uh, correctly authenticated service. All right, good luck. Leave any comments that you have in GitHub for changing the redirect script, or if you have any questions, go to djp3.discourse.com in order to start a discussion about it. Thanks for your attention.